الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله تعالى من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهدي الله تعالى فهو المهتد ومن يضلل فلن تجد له ولي مرشدا وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم صلي وسلم وزد وبارك عليه وعلى آله وصحبه ومن اهتدى بهذه ونحن معهم بفضلك وجودك وكرمك يا رب الرحمن All praise is due to Allah سبحانه وتعالى We praise him, we thank him and we always, always seek Allah's forgiveness We always seek Allah's help We always need and ask and beg Allah سبحانه وتعالى to make us understand to teach us why we exist what is the purpose of our life? Why we eat and drink and work and earn and buy and sell? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us for a purpose. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam never began talking without saying Alhamdulillah, Ahmadu, wa nasta'inu, wa nasta'afiru What I said in the beginning. It's called khutbat al-haja. It's called a speech of a needy person. We need Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We need Allah to help us to say that which is correct. We need Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to say that which is correct, which is pleasing to him. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, in the Quran, in the Quran is Allah speaks. It's Allah talking to us, the creator of the universe, telling us, مَا يَلْفِذُ مِنْ قَوْلٍ إِلَّا لَدَيْهِ رَقِيبٌ عَتِيمٌ Allah says there is an angel, special, special, created especially to write down everything you say. Everything you say, it's recorded by, the, by an angel. Not the mobile or MP3, no, no. This is the technology of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He doesn't skip anything. The Prophet sallallahu said, Hatta safir, even whistling. You whistle, the angel record. He doesn't know why you whistle. He doesn't know, and he doesn't care. He just writes it down, and you answer Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, أحب الأعمال إلى الله the the most beloved deeds to Allah the deeds that Allah loves most أدوامها the consistent one the continuous one وإن قل even if it is very small أحب الأعمال إلى الله Allah is our creator Allah is in control Allah in control of our future Allah is in control of our wealth health, property, children, house, wife, parents, everything. We need to please him. So we need to ask him, what do you like most? Oh Allah, what do you like most? What is the best deed that I can do that will please you most? The message that Sallallahu told us, yes, I can answer you, adwamuha, the consistent good deed. Allah doesn't like this curve that goes up and down. Comes Ramadan, we are very 100% in Masjid and we fasting and we make zakah and everything. After Ramadan, we are dead for 11 months. Allah doesn't like that. He gave us the eyes. It works all the time. It doesn't only work in Ramadan. The same with the brain. The same with the lungs and the livers and the kidney and the skin and the arms and the legs and the brain and the tongue. And you, you look at yourself in the mirror and find out what works on the 27th of Ramadan. What works on only Ramadan? What only works on the last 10 days of Ramadan? You will find nothing. Everything works every single second as a slave to us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us and give us this arm like a slave. You don't even say to it, grab something. You just think about it and it grabs it. You think about it and you say it. You think about it and it becomes like a slave to you. Do what you say, do to it. So, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us as a human being and honored us. If you look around us in the universe, you will find rocks, mountains, objects. They have, they're taking a space in this universe. They have a space, but they don't grow, they don't move, they don't think, they don't, yeah, they're just taking a space. Then you find plants. They're taking a space, but they grow, but they don't move. They don't think, they don't talk. And then you find animals. They're taking a space. And they grow and they move. But they don't think, 
They don't have conscience. They don't know what's halal and haram. They don't know what's right and wrong. And then we ask. We take a space. We grow. We move. But we think. And that's the only difference. That's the only honor that Allah gave to us. Allah says, if human beings don't use that thinking, in whom kal an'am, they go back as stick. They become like animals. Eat and drink and have children and animals eat the best thing. They run faster than any human being. They see further than any human being. They hear more than any human being. Yeah. So if a person don't think and say, why, are, why am I created? Why am I here? Why this beautiful sky? Beautiful trees, beautiful animals, beautiful... He needs to... Muslim, Muslim. Think about everything around him differently. He think about the future differently. He think about the past and history differently. He think about the tree differently, about the wind differently, about the sun, the moon, the people differently because he looks and sees Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's power. Whenever we see things, we see Allah's power. I was talking to a boy today. What is Axel? Is he here? Yeah. He's... Axel, you come in here. <laughs> Got you on the spot now. Can I have Axel inside here? I was asking Axel, where is, how far is the sun? How far away is the sun from us? He knows, I told him the answer. How far away is the sun? It's 156 million kilometers. A pilot here can tell it. 156 million kilometers. Yeah? You know how long it will take us to fly to the sun? With a very fast plane? 1,000 kilometers an hour, faster than the plane to Auckland. It will take us 17 years. Flying non-stop. Flying non-stop just to reach the sun 17 years non-stop flying with 1,000 kilometers per hour. This is the sun. The nearest galaxy to us, the nearest star to the sun, it will take us 46 million years. Million, I didn't make a mistake. 46 million years of flying to reach the nearest, the nearest galaxy, not the furthest. <laughs> Wallahi, if we really understand the furthest, we go crazy. If we know what is the furthest away, we will lose our mind. But that's how powerful Allah is. How great Allah is. Yesterday I was reading, they say, the observable, what they can see in the universe. The observable is what they can see with the machines and with calculations. The observable universe, diameter, is 93 billion light years. You know, that, that's a number that no human being can understand. Light year is a nine and a half million, million kilometers. You go around the earth, it's 30,000 kilometers. It's nothing. The light goes around the earth 10 times in a second. So you can travel for 39 or 93 billion years to reach a galaxy. That's how great Allah. We can't, we can't displease Allah. We can't challenge Him. We can't, Wallahi, we can't, if we really know who Allah is, we can't disobey Him. If He say, come to pray, we can't say, I don't need to pray, I'm good. I'm a good person, I, I don't need to pray, I don't hurt anybody, I don't harm anybody. You know when somebody say, I don't harm anybody, I don't hurt anybody, I don't need to pray. You know what he, He's saying? He's saying, I'm God. I make my own religion. That's what He's saying. He's saying, I will make my own, this is his religion. The person who say, I don't need to pray, I don't need to fast, I don't need the Quran, I don't need the masjid, he is actually putting himself in really challenging Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the surah we read last week, we'll continue today, is called Surah Al-Insan. It is a chapter about us, about human being. And it begins by saying, remember where you come from. Allah says to us, remember your history. You remember your one single cell one day. You're a single cell. Only Allah chose, only Allah decided that you become a human being. He decided to, you become a human being. I was asking the doctor Nisa the other day. I said to him, our heart bumps blood into the lungs. 
to get oxygenated. <laughs> Otherwise, we will, we, we will die without this cycle of blood circulation. The blood has to go into the lungs, get oxygen, and go and feed the body. The baby's heart inside the mother's tummy is also working. The baby's heart inside the fe in the fetus, in the mother's tummy, it's also pumping blood, but there is no lungs. The baby's lung is not working inside the tummy. I said, well, how does it work? Why the heart is pumping and the lungs are not working? How does it work? And the doctor told me, there is, there is a hole <laughs> in the two upper part of the heart, and the circle is shorted in, when the baby is inside, so there is no lungs, it doesn't go outside, it stays inside. And it feeds on the mother's nutrients and oxygen is coming from the mother's body. Yeah? But the second the baby is out of the mother's tummy, you know what? That hole gets closed. Oh. The second the baby comes out with the first breath, that hole's closed. Oh. That is the a miracle of a miracle of a miracle that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decided if that hole doesn't close. You are in, in a very serious, dangerous situation as a baby. Allah says, remember that, remember that time. هَلْ أَتَعَ الْإِنسَانِ حِينٌ مِنَ الدَّهِ لَمْ يَكُنْ شَيْئًا مَذْكُورًا Every human being, at, before his date of birth, he was nothing. He was nothing. He was not worth mentioning. So now you become a manager, now you become an engineer, now you become a doctor, become a president even, a king. You can't challenge Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because one day he's going to take that soul back again. That soul that is making you who you are, one day is going to go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And there's only two places. There's two places, either Jannah or Hellfire. There's no between. When a human being meets Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you either pass <coughs> or don't pass. And that's, that, that's the outcome you never ever want to think about. When we speak as a community, as Muslims, as brothers and sisters, we say it's either Jannah or Jannah. There's no other option for us. When we talk, we're either going Jannah together or Jannah together. We have to help each other to go to Jannah. Allah described Jannah here. He says, when we stopped the last week, Allah says, وَيَطُوفُ عَلَيْهِمْ وَلْدَانُ مُخَلَّدُونَ In Jannah, in Paradise, there is no sadness anymore. There is no anger anymore. There is no failure anymore. There is no pain. There is no aches. There is no poverty. There is no sickness. The, the Prophet ﷺ said, there is no sleep. Because you sleep here because you're tired. There's no sleep in Jannah. You can't sleep. There's so much to do. There's so many beautiful things to do. Allah says, you look around the children in Jannah like diamonds, like pearls. Just spreading happiness and tranquility and peace everywhere. Yeah? Allah says, the people in Jannah, they will be treated like royal. If you look over there in Jannah, out of your balcony, out of your windows in Jannah, you will see kingdom. You will see blessing. Allah described the blessing as massive. Imagine if Allah himself described the blessing of Jannah as massive blessings. So that's something we need to work towards. As I say, make it to Jannah. You will never be disappointed. Make it, just make it to Jannah. You will never, man, woman, children, just make it to Jannah. Wallahi, you will never be disappointed. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promised that the people in Jannah will be treated like kings. No, not like kings. 50 times better than the richest king ever. For who? For the last person to make it to Jannah. The last person to make it to Jannah. The one who absolutely just got the bare minimum. The Quran says, فَمَنْ زُحْزِحَ عَنِ النَّارِ وَأُدْخِلَ الْجَنَّةِ فَقَدْ فَاز Allah says, the winner. The truly winner, the successful one, are the one who made it to Jannah. No matter how, make it to Jannah, you will absolutely feel success. You will absolutely taste sweetness. You will really enjoy peace. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لا يبغون عنها حولا. Jannah is the only place you will never like to leave and change. Jannah, it can never ever happen in this life. Never. In this, even you live in New York, Paris, London, 
well, whatever waterfront, palace, after one year, two years, ten years, you want to change. This is just typical human being. In this life, you always want to change. The best house, after a few years, your kids are growing and they ask for change and the wife says this and you say this and you want to go somewhere else. But in Jannah, Allah says, لا يبغون عنها حو. They would never ever want to move. How can you move from a place? Allah described it that you will have your own rivers. <laughs> you will have your own rivers. Allah described the houses in Jannah that they have rivers of honey and milk under the house. In dunya, in this life here, any palace, pick any palace in the world. What goes under the palace? <laughs> Dirty and filthy water. <laughs> Sewage. That's what it goes. Allah described Jannah as rivers of beautiful drink that it will be remote controlled by the person. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us Jannah. Yeah? So, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, that in hadha kana lakum jaza'a. This is your effort. That's your hard work in dunya. It has, it has been acknowledged. It has been appreciated by Allah Himself. And then Allah says to us as a Muslim, listen to this because Allah speaks to the Prophet sallallahu but we need to listen. Inna nahnu نزلنا عليك القرآن تنزيلا. We have continually sent down the Quran to you. Twenty-three years. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala taking twenty-three years to teach the community, the Muslim, how to behave, how to be strong, how to be patient, how to protect themselves from evil, how to achieve good deed. Allah says it is Allah that sent that Quran over this period of time. What is the requirement? فاصبر لحكم ربك. You need to be patient. Fasbir lhukm Rabbi. You need to be patient with the command of Allah, with the instruction of Allah. It needs patience. It's not easy to pray five times a day. Nobody said so. It's not easy to read Quran every day. It's not easy to remember how to say Bismillah and Alhamdulillah and eat with the right hand, sleep. In the it's not easy, but it needs patience. You need the person to say, I will learn. I will persevere. I will go step by step. I will learn this first. I will learn one line every month. I will read one surah every month. But at least you have that connection and line open with Allah. You need, as we said the last week, you need patience to do good deed and to continue doing it. You need patience to avoid bad deed. Patience means control, self-control. Self-control on that remote control. You know that you can, when you see some bad image on TV, you flick it off. He said, ah, that's not good for us to watch. It, it, it disturbs us when we watch all this horrible swearing and all this program in TV. We can't watch that as a Muslim. It is wholesome, good program, yes, but if something like, you need to be patient and control your desire. Yes, it is painful not to watch and enjoy, but sometimes Allah will give you a better reward. You need to be patient for the calamities. When some problems happen in this life, as a Muslim, we need to be patient. We can't reject Allah's decision. If we are poor, if we are sick, if we lost a job, if we lost something, we need to be patient. Allah knows best what is best for us, and we accept what Allah gives to us. And we ask Allah, Ya Allah, please help us. We need a job. Ya Allah, help us. We need education. We ask Allah non-stop. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves those who ask Him. So, be, Allah, Allah's advice to us with the Quran is to be patient. The second one, وَلَا تُطِعْ مِنْهُمْ آثِمًا أَوْ كَفُورًا Don't obey the sinners. Allah says, don't follow the sinners. Don't follow the ungrateful. Somebody who doesn't recognize who Allah is. Somebody who doesn't care who created him. Where, is he, where he came from? Where is he going? We should not be listening to their advice and their books and their movies and their articles. We need to be very careful what to eat, what to drink, what to read, what to watch. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, don't follow the sinners. Don't follow the ungrateful. How you do that? وَذْكُرِ اسْمَ رَبِّكَ بُكْرَةً وَأَصِيلًا By always being conscious of Allah. Remembering the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala day and night. Being conscious, Allah is watching me. It's not, it's not that our culture, it's not our community, it's not the sheikh, it's not my father or mother. No, it's Allah that's watching me. Allah give me that time, give me that energy, give me that money. Then 
I'm conscious of Allah all the time. Allah says morning or evening. It means all the time the Muslim is watching Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, you worship Allah as if you are seeing him. You worship Allah. When you stand up to pray, it's not that my father is looking. No, Allah is looking. Then I'm concentrating in my salah. When I'm eating, it's the same way. When I'm talking, the same way. When I'm texting, <coughs> emailing, shaitan come to my head and say, nobody's watching, you're hiding now in your room, all the curtains are closed, now you can text, no problem. <laughs> hey, it's a bigger problem. The one who gave you these fingers, the one who gave you these fingers, he will ask you, how did he use it? The one who gave you the eyes to see the text, he will ask you, why did you write this thing? Why did you share it? Why did you forward the text? Why did you? Yeah? Because as Allah gave you eyes to see, there is more than 200 million blind people in the world. And you are not one of them. He gave you the ear to hear, there is more than 250 million deaf people in the world. Then if he give you the ear to hear, you can't just waste it all the time listening to music. You know, somebody said, I'm listening to Arab music, it's halal. <laughs> There's no such a thing. There's no such a thing, halal Arab music, no. You need, I tell the brother who listen to the Arab halal music. If you listen for one hour music, please listen to one hour Quran. You know, to be fair, listen to the music one hour, but listen to the Quran also with the same enjoyment for one hour. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says you need to be conscious that Allah is watching all the time. Allah doesn't sleep. We sleep. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is aware of every one of us. So he knows us more than we know ourselves. Allah says especially at night, وَمِنَ اللَّيْلِ فَاسْجُدْ لَهُ We need Allah. We need Allah. Allah says at night time, you finish your work, you finish your study, you finish everything. Now go and wash, make wudu and pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Finish the day with two rak'ah, saying, thank you Allah, I'm at safe place. Thank you Allah, it is secure in here, I can drive anywhere I want. Thank you Allah, the fridge is full of food, the cupboard is full of cans, the bank, there is money in the bank account, I have a car, I have a house. How many millions and millions of people are not safe? They're not safe in Egypt, in Somalia, in Syria, in Afghanistan, in Sudan, in Pakistan, all these people, they can lose their life anytime. So if Allah gave us safety, it's not for free. It's for us to, to be tested. How are we going to react? Then Allah says, وَمِنَ اللَّيْلِ At night, فَاسْجُدْ لَهُ Make sujood. Make sujood. The first, the first Quran, the first Quran ever. What was it? Iqra. Yes? The first Quran ever, it was Iqra. It ended by Wasjud Waqtar. The first Quran ever, Allah sent down, He says, Make sujood, you are closest to Allah. When you make sujood, you are nearest to your Creator. Then talk to Him. Tell Him anything you want, in any language you want. Ya Allah, I'm weak. Ya Allah, I'm sinner. Ya Allah, I make mistake. I can't keep the prayer. I can't keep, you know, respect my mom, my dad. I can't, do whatever it is you're suffering from, whatever it is you, you want, tell Allah when you are in sujood. Because you are nearest to Allah when you're making sujood. Allah is telling us in this surah, you want to achieve Jannah, you want to achieve success. وَمِنَ اللَّيْلِ فَاسْجُدْ لَهُ وَسَبِّحْهُ لَيْلًا طَوِيلًا Make sujood and declare, when you make sujood, you're saying, Allah, you are the only perfect one. Allah, you are the only high one. I am not high. I am not perfect. I fall asleep. If, I do, if a human, any human being, any human <coughs> being, don't sleep for 17 hours, they start to lose concentration. If they don't sleep for a few days, they may die. Human being, if they, they want to punish somebody and torture somebody, they stop them from sleeping. Sleeping is more necessary than food and drink for us. So, it's a blessing, it's a gift. Before you sleep, pray to Raqqa, thanking Allah for the day, thanking Allah for the energy, thank Allah for the health. There is so many things you have, you need to say, Allah, thank you. You give me another day, you give me a good house, you give me a good car. Good, whatever it is that you have, thank Allah for it. Whatever it is you need, ask Allah for it. 
So say Subhanallah. Subhanallah means Allah is perfect. You know we say Subhanallah. Subhanallah. It means Allah is perfect. What's that mean? It means everything Allah does is praiseworthy. I need to thank Him for it. Even the problem, yes, even the problem. Because we don't understand. We are slave. We are created thing. He is the owner of everything. Allah is the owner of everything. And the owner never spoil his property. Never corrupt his property. We are property of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We need to trust Allah so much. We need to love him so much that his decision is the best. We say to ourselves, I don't understand why it happened, but I know that Allah is doing the right thing. I put my trust in him. Subhanallah. Perfection belongs to him. He is praiseworthy. He, can, he doesn't do nothing wrong. I trust his judgment. I trust his call. I trust his decision. I trust his decree. I know the future will be much, much better for me. And I will accept it. Yeah? Because if a problem happened, it, you either accept it or reject it. <laughs> if you reject it, you will be rejected by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the same, it will happen, it will happen. Nobody can stop it. It's like the windy day today. Some people complain about windy day. But what can they do? Nothing. So why do they complain? They should be saying, Allah have a wisdom behind that. Allah has power behind that. Thank you, Allah, you make it windy. It means the clouds, the seeds, the pollen will spread and the, some country will get some food. Some country will get some rain. Some fish in the ocean will get some oxygen when the rain comes down in the ocean. As a Muslim, we respect what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decides in ourselves or in the environment around us. So, Muslim should declare the perfection of Allah alone. And not follow. Allah says, Inna haula yuhibbuna al-ajila. The sinners, the ungrateful, those who complain all the time, all they like is what is in front of them. All they like is this life. They, don't, they absolutely have no idea. They put off the thinking of Allah, the thinking of who brought us into this planet, who gave us life, who will take it, what happened after I die. Allah says, don't follow those people. Though, they like this life more than the Akhirah. They leave behind, they completely ignore. يوم الفقيلة, a heavy day. Allah called the day when we stand in front of Him, when we answer our question, a heavy day. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy and light for us. Allah says to us, نحن خلقناهم وشددنا أسرهم. We created them. وشددنا أسرهم. شددنا أسرهم means we have connected every single cell of the body. We have tightened every single joint in the body. Wallahi, when you read this ayah and you think our oh, body says, subhanallah, how is our fingers moving like this? All this movement, you know, the most complicated industry in the world can't produce a hand like this. There's no way they're going to produce a hand like this. They try, they're spending billions of dollars. But they still will never ever have a hand that will have a touch of a father, a touch of a mother. A touch of a kind person on the head of a young boy. This is the hand that Allah says, I put it together. In another surah, remember Allah says, Bala qadirina ala al musawiya banana. Allah will put it back together after he die. As he put it back, as he put it together now in this life, every single cell Allah put them together, it's Allah that put them together. He will put them together back again. You can't escape the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَإِذَا شِئْنَا Allah says, if we will, we can replace them. Easy to replace any enemy of Allah. If somebody challenge Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in any country, it doesn't matter how powerful it is. Allah can send easy earthquake, volcano, tsunamis, all these tornadoes. To happens all the time around us, even in this country. Even in this country, it can happen any time and our life will change forever. So as a Muslim, we know Allah in the good time. We know Allah when we are comfortable and happy and, you know, healthy. So if any problem happens in the future, Allah will remember that, that we know Him in the good time. He will help us in the hard time. Allah says, this is a powerful reminder. All this surah, all this talk, This is a powerful reminder 
You know what remind I mean? It means you know it already. You just need to be reminded that Allah is the most powerful. Allah is the perfect one. You're going to meet Allah. You're going to stand before Him. You're going to answer the question. You're going to respond. And you have to prepare a response for everything you've done in this life. فَمَنْ شَاءَ اتَّخَذَ إِلَىٰ رَبِّهِ سَبِيلًا If this reminder will benefit you, you need to change direction now to Allah. It's now. There is no, there is no saying, Insha'Allah Ramadan. Insha'Allah when I'm 60. Insha'Allah when I have time. All this is, is false. All this is not good. Allah gives you life now. You need to deal with Him now. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أَلَمْ يَأْنِي أَمَنُوا أَن تَخْشَ قُلُوبُهُمْ لِذِكْرِ اللَّهِ Allah says, now is the time for the heart of the believer to submit to Allah. Now is the time. It can never ever be, inshallah, tomorrow. I will start from Friday. I will start Ramadan. No. Allah has right on you to pray five times a day. It must be now. It can't be delayed. Because the angel of death has the list. And if you go to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with shortcoming, it's, it's not a good end. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the best ending. So Allah says, this is a powerful reminder. If it benefits you, it will benefit you only if you change. Only if you take the step and say, Ya Allah, I'm turning to you. Please help me. It doesn't matter what sin you're making. You still have to turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is your creator. He loves you more than your mother. He loves you more than anybody else in the world. He created Jannah for us. This Jannah he describes here, all these palaces in Jannah, is not for him. It's not for the angels. It is for human being. So one of this place in Jannah is yours. You claim it now. While you still have the opportunity, while we're still alive, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَا تَشَاءُونَ إِلَّا يَشَاءُ اللَّهِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ كَانَ عَلِيمًا حَكِيمًا Know full well that whatever you want is under the control of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You need to put your want, your wishes, your desire in line with what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants for us. You need to like what Allah like. Because Allah says, whatever you want is under the control of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah has been always the all knowledgeable, the all wise. Aliman, Hakima. He knows everything you do. And he is also have all wisdom to help you and to decide for you and to guide you and to protect you. Yudkhilu. If you follow the reminder, if you change now, Allah says, يُدْخِلُ مَنْ يَشَاءُ فِي رَحْمَتِهِ He will enter whomever He wish, whoever He wants, in His mercy, in His care, in His protection. As for those that the reminder don't benefit them, as for those that they don't, you know, they say, yeah, yeah that's all right, inshallah, one day, I'm doing it. وَالظَّالِمِينَ Those wrongdoers, Allah described them, أَعَدَّ لَهُمْ He already have prepared for them, عَذَابًا Punishment, أَلِيمًا Painful one. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. Amen. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most merciful, is the most kind. But you also cannot be disobeyed intentionally. It cannot be ignored and rejected and turned away from because he also severe in punishment. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prepared, as I said, Jannah, paradise, or hellfire. There's no, there's no other room. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us among the people of Jannah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us and protect our iman and increase us in knowledge and bring us closer to him. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide us and to protect our homes and our families, our children and to protect the community and increase us in understanding, increase us in knowledge and make us among the people of Qur'an. Jazakumullah khairan. Subhanakallah wa alhamdulillah. Ashadu wa la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayhi.